magical plot solving button. Are you saying that you don't know who Doctor Who is? Wednesday evening, it's 8 o'clock, and you know what that means, it's time for Tea Time with Matt. We're back, oh yes. Now it's been a while, uh, so what's been happening? Well, um, we have a Tory government still, that, uh, well, since the last show, that was the election special, that, that was a thing. Yeah. Less we say about that, the better. Uh, what else has been going on? We've got a new doctor, uh, in the form of Jodie Whittaker. Uh, or as you saw in that trailer there, she might be being replaced by Emily Caroline Edwards. Dunno, depends which universe you're in at the moment. Uh, what else? Uh, we've got... L less we say about America, the better, I think. Um, what else? Oh, uh, my family's got a new puppy. That, that's, that's a nice thing. So, yeah. Oh, and uh, finally, of course, I'm famous now. Um... So yeah, more on that later, uh, hence why I'm wearing the sunglasses, can't be too careful. Who have we got in the chat room? Well, we've got millions of people. Well, uh, let's do it in alphabetical order. We've got Aldigo93, hello, or is it Aldigo? I don't know. Uh, Billingsley Central, hello Billingsley. Uh, we've got me, Tina, who you will never know who it is. Mysterious. Uh, Mr. Spud Nugget, hello. Rory's back, hello Rory. Uh, SNTNL, uh, no idea who you are, sir, but welcome nonetheless. Uh, we got Sterling back in the chat room. Hello, Sterling, and of course, the banker. And who can forget the one, the only, Brent Kage. Brent Kage's back, everybody. He'll be joining us live on the air a little bit later on. Uh, Landlord Steve's also in the chat room. Hello, Landlord Steve. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Landlord Steve asks, Matt, are you channeling Peters and Lee? I've no idea what that is. I'm not going to lie, uh, which earns me one of these right from the get-go. No, that's that's the wrong jingle. What's going on here? Where's my fail button? There we go. No, that's the cheering button. Fail. Fail. I'm a failure. We're off to a good start already. Uh, apparently, SNTNL is me Tina's husband. Oh, well, hello, me Tina's husband. Again, you'll never know who they are. Uh, right, so what have we got coming up on the show tonight? Uh, we're talking about the fact I'm famous now. 
more on that later. Uh, we're going to be looking at a number of different things. We're going to be talking about how to cope with fame. There'll be common sense advice on that coming up a bit later. Uh, we will also be taking a look at the brand new Tea Time with Matt wiki. Yes, that is a thing. We'll be taking a look at that a bit later on. Uh, also coming up, we've got Tea Time with Matt's Alternative Facts, uh, a Tea Time News Update, a Tea Time Weather Update, and all manner of cool things. Uh, so we're going to kick off uh, with our first song of the evening, uh, which is I Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. Enjoy this, folks. <laughs> to you live with a cuppa and a biscuit. It's Tea Time with Matt. That's right, folks. It is Tea Time with Matt. And a lot going on in the chat room at the moment. It's really, really busy. Uh, people talking about the Tea Time with Matt wiki. We'll definitely be having a look at that a little bit later on. Uh, and there'll be explanations on why certain people uh, haven't got entries. Uh, well, no, I can, I can give you an explanation now. I'm famous now. I'm far too busy. I've not finished it all yet. Yeah? Just, you know chill and be odd yeah i don't know anyway what is happening in the chat room uh people talking about song requests we'll get a couple of those in that'll be good uh duh, duh, duh. 
Aldigo says there's the song The Smashing Pumpkins Tonight, uh, which the singer is the same guy who does the SpongeBob voice. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Sterling says, if you want a song from a famous singer, then you've got to do The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. We'll give that a go. I, I like that one. We'll give that a go too. Uh, what else is going on in the chat room? Apparently Ken Lee has a good entry, but Steve from Microsoft needs one too. No one knows who these people are, me Tina. These are in-jokes, yeah? Honestly. Uh, right, so, uh, why am I famous? Well, oh, hello. Tea Fairy's here. Where are the biscuits? He's slacking off, guys. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. What's, what's he put in here, anyway? Oh. oh, good lord, that's Prosecco. I've gone up in the world. Nice. Okay. Ah. <coughs> Landlord Steve, Dad wanders in. Who's Dad? I've no idea who Dad is. That's the Tea Fairy. Come on. Yeah, you guys know who the Tea Fairy is. Yes, right. I was going to say, why I'm famous now. It's a bit awkward, this. Um... Because I can't actually tell you exactly why I'm famous now. Um, essentially, in July, June this year, I took part in a television show, uh, which is being made by the same production company uh, that makes The Great British Bake Off. Uh, all I can tell you is it's called The Biggest Little Railway. And it's about a group of enthusiasts and engineers building a railway from somewhere to somewhere else. And that's all I can tell you because I've signed a very scary legal sounding document which forbids me from telling you any more. Now it was supposed to be on in, at the beginning of November but unfortunately uh, the slot that it would have been on Channel 4 is also occupied by the Blue Planet. And so it really would have been no contest. Meaning that we've been pushed back to January. So in short Attenborough! Sorry, I've deafened you all there. Uh, people in the chat room talking about this. Sterling says, oh, I like the sound of this already. Billingsley Central says, awesome. It was. Uh, Rory says, sounds fun. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. Um, I can't tell you much more, like I say, because I signed a scary non-disclosure agreement thing. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, it was great fun, and I, I can't wait to um, for it to be on the telly so I can tell you guys all about it. Um... I think it's going to get international distribution, don't know when, don't know how, they're not telling us anything really, um, for obvious reasons, it's television, it's all very secretive, so yeah, that's the re one of the reasons why I'm famous, in fact that's the main reason I'm famous, uh, and it has kind of balls up me, <laughs> me theme for tonight if I'm perfectly honest, because uh, I was going to talk about the program, I was going to maybe try and show a clip of it or some photographs from uh, my time on it, but I can't do that now because of David Attenborough and the Blue Planet on BBC One. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Landlord Steed says, apparently it's quite well documented on the internet. Yep, yeah, if you Google it online, you can find out more about it that way. It's just, I'm forbidden from telling you anything. But that doesn't mean to say you can't go and look it up yourself. So, you know, feel free to do that. That's, that's, that's totally cool. Uh, right. Uh... Mr. Spud Nugget said, trust we do not in the BBC. No, no, we don't. We don't like the BBC anymore. Anyway, right, um, shall we do the weather? Uh, I think we probably should, because, you know, weather goes on all the time. Let's do it. Weather sound bed. I'm going to knock the microphone up, but I don't think I actually need to, because I've got a super duper new microphone, uh, which means you can hear me from the next street. So, hang on, let's uh, swing the camera around. Here we go. Oh, someone's put the blind down. Get rid of the paparazzi. There we come. Right. Ooh, chilly out there. Not sunglasses weather. Mainly because it's dark. Right, um, it's a bit damp. Very cold. Hang on. It's cloudy, I can't see any stars. Uh, and and it, it's difficult because I, I can't really see as much as I usually can. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, no, it's it's quite a clear night, uh, sort of a ground level, but there's a lot of clouds. Might rain later, unless it doesn't, in which case it won't. Right, that was the weather. 
you want to let us know what it's doing in your area, uh, let us know in the chat room, which is over on that side of the screen. That side of the screen? Wait, no. That side of the screen. There we go. And our jingles run out already. That's a good start. Uh, knock the microphone down a bit. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Right. Me, Tina. Song suggestion. Sunglasses at night. I'll look that one up. Uh, Weather-wise, uh, lots of people saying uh, stuff. Uh, weather for the UK. Rain, rain, and more blooming rain. Uh, Brent says, over here it's chilly but sunny. Uh, Stanley says, it's cold here. Sunny but cold, and I hate it. Oh, no. I, I'm not a fan of the cold either. My leg plays up where I broke it earlier in the year. Uh, what else? Uh, pitch black over here near Sunny Honey, says Billingley Central. Nice. Uh, Aldigo says, at least they don't have to worry about hurricanes. Oh, do you have to worry about hurricanes? That's not good. Uh, and Rory says, we've already had snow for an evening, but it melted and now it's kind of grey and dull. Uh, me, Tina says, it was raining when I left the shops at about six this evening. Uh, so thank you for the weather update, folks. Now, if you want to get in touch with the show, the easiest way, of course, is to do so in the chat room, which is over there. Or you can get in touch with me in a variety of other ways. You can tweet me. My username is at Tea Time with Matt. Uh, you can get in touch with me on the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Tea Time with Matt. Or you can email me, Tea Time with Matt at gmail.com. I'll be checking the inbox throughout the show. So if anyone does fire me an email, uh, that's great. Now, if you're not listening to me on live stream, uh, you are probably listening on TuneIn. And this is important for all of you on live stream as well. Uh, uh, because TuneIn is a radio streaming app that you can get on your phone or your tablet. So if you're not able to access live stream from where you are, and you want to get involved in the show anyway, you can still do that using the TuneIn app. Literally just go on and search for Tea Time with Matt, uh, add it as your favourite station, or one of your favourite stations, and uh, you can listen to the show uh, whenever it's on. Uh, we'll also, at some point, be adding a playlist of previous shows, uh, which will be edited to remove copyright stuff and what have you, uh, just to make life much better for everybody. So, yeah, you'll be able to listen to a constant loop of old episodes of Tea Time with Matt. How cool is that? That's brilliant. Billingsley Central says, Only advantage of Lynn, we're near the beach. <laughs> nice. Uh, Sterling says that's a plus at least. True, true, very true. I'm going to take these off. Um, I'm sorry. The, these are these are just making me so warm, and you know I'm I'm not I'm normally quite committed to my themes and the jokes are within them, but it's it's too warm in here for that, so not happening. Oh dear. Right. Uh, what have we got up next? Oh yes. Right. Uh, now that I'm famous, uh, companies keep asking me to do product endorsements for them. And, uh, you know, I, I try to stay away from all that because I, I want to keep my reputation clean. Uh, you know how it is. Uh, and that's why uh, I... Oh, gosh, hang on. Uh-oh. It's all gone wrong. The, the streaming software's locked up. Fail. I'm a failure. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's that's not good. Um, right, if you're on live stream, can you still see me? Uh oh. Um, oh, no, no. It looks like we've lost. <laughs> oh dear. It looks like we've lost the live stream stream. That is bad times. Okay. Uh, I'm going to crash out of that. If you're still listening on TuneIn, uh, thank you so much. Oh no, no, no. We're back. I think we're back. Are we back? We're back! Yay! Hello! <laughs> oh dear. Uh, that was that was worrying for a second, wasn't it? Deary me. Right, yes. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I try to stay away from product endorsements and things uh, because, you know, I want to I want to keep my reputation cl clean. Uh, which is why I always clean my hands uh, with Germaway. Uh, from Honest Jeff Cleaning Supplies Limited. Uh, Germaway is the only hand sanitizer to kill 100% of germs guaranteed. Uh, using patented anti entomantoids, uh, Germaway has been scientifically proven to kill all germs. It's like the hand sanitizing equivalent of an atom bomb. Germaway, available in stores now. Small disclaimer Germaway may not kill all germs, no refunds will be given, in some rare cases, may cause the user to dissolve. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's play another song. This is Nickelback and Rockstar. Oh yeah. 
I'm through with standing in line, the clubs I'll never get in. It's like the bottom of the ninth, and I'm never gonna win this. Life hasn't turned out quite the way I want it to be. Tell me what you want. I want a brand new house on an episode of Cribs and a bathroom I can play baseball in. And a king size tub big enough for ten plus me. Yeah, that's what you need. I'll need a, a credit card that's got no It's been a long day. Put the kettle on. It's tea time with Matt. Yes, it is indeed tea time with Matt. That was Nickelback and Rockstar. Uh, you just saw Sky the Baby there. That's uh, my sister's golden retriever puppy. And yes, she is flipping adorable. Uh, except for all the peeing on the floor and the barking. Uh, which is an issue. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, so... Yeah, that's uh, that was Sky uh, and William and Alfie, who uh, I assume most of you know already. Uh, those are our now three dogs, and yes, they are freaking adorable. I'm not going to lie. Uh, right, uh, what now? Oh yes, that's what's happening now. 
Uh, it's time once again uh, for us to cross the pond and hook up with the one, the only, American correspondent. Here he is, folks, it's Brenton Kage. Oh, yes. I haven't got you on sound, mate. Hold on. Hello? Can't hear him. You've disappeared, mate. Hang on, what's going on here? See if I can get this working. Hold on. Wait, where's the sound gone? <laughs> it's the fail jingle. Fail. I'm a real failure. Oh, dumb. It's <laughs> Bren's got a Pokemon balanced on his head because, of course, he does. Uh, right, while I try and get the sound working, uh, what's happening in the chat room still? Uh, SNTNL says, I hope that's the dog peeing and barking. No, that's my sister. Um, <laughs> you can hear my mum in the background uh, <laughs> looking after her. Dearie me. Uh, where is the sound? Come on. Uh, Bren, can you actually hear me? Big thumbs up if you can, please. Yes, he can hear me. Good, that's a good start. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, the first show back, and we've already got major technical problems. It's it's just the way, isn't it? Hold on. Hold on. I can hear myself speaking in the background. That's probably not a good sign. Hold on. Here we go. Speakers. Uh, use uh, speaker. Blah blah blah. blah. Am I going to have to come back to this? We might have to come back to this. I don't know what's happening anymore. Oh boy. Um, bu 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 bu. Hold on, let's pull that out. Plug that back in. Bren, are you there? No, he's still talking. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Okay. Hold on. Okay, even the technical difficulty sound has stopped working. This probably is not a good sign, folks. Um. Fail. I'm a failure. Right, so I'm going to go away for a minute and try and fix the technical problems, folks. I will be right back. This is McMarty McFly and the Starlighters with Johnny Be Good. Enjoy.
Tea Time with Matt. Because Dunkers do it best. I really hope this works. Bren, can you hear me? Okay, still nothing from that. Oh, grrr, I'm so angry right now. Fail. Fail. Oh, I a real failure. I have no idea what's gone wrong here. There's, uh, there's something very, very wrong with the way Skype's working. Hang on, if I kill Skype and go back in, maybe that'll work. Hold on, I'm going to give that a go. Uh, in the chat room, what's happening? Uh, at least you remember where the fail button is, says Rory. Yeah, that's that's always a bonus. Uh, what else have we got going on? We uh, The sound cut out a few times. Uh, I hear his music through Skype. Uh, I don't think this was scripted. I think if there wasn't a problem, then there would really be something wrong. I mean that in the best way possible, says Sterling. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hang on. It's probably not something as stupid as I'm thinking, is it? Hold on. There's a, is that a puppy I see in the background? It is a puppy! Come here, Sky. Come here, Sky. Come on, Sky. No, no, she's got stage fright. Oh, dear. Uh, no speakers detected. Right. Okay, that's a new one. Um, uh, automatically adjust speaker settings to try that. Or that. Or anything? No? Oh, blimey. Speakers seem to be working fine. Okay, uh, let's. I'm going to try the Skype call testing service. Yeah, we're, we're just going to sit here and have technical difficulties for a minute. It's, um, oh. Nope, that's not working either. Jolly good. Okay, so looks like that's not going to work. Uh, mm. uh, me, Tina says, Bren, how does it feel to be the voice of the silent majority? Um, Probably pretty good for him. I got got to be honest. It must must be quite good. I mean, there's, uh, oh, um, right. How are we going to do this? There's got to be another way of making this work. Um, I'm going to see about finding another cable. I think so. We'll, we'll come back to you, Bren. I'm really sorry about this. Um, we're going to have to try something else. I think. Oh dear. Um, Discord might work, says Bren. I don't know what Discord is. Um, I think it's more a problem with my computer because I'm not getting any sound off XSplit either, which is the broadcast software I use. So, uh, yeah, not not really sure how to fix this. Mm. Right. Anyway, we'll um, we'll sort this out and we'll come back. So I'm I'm going to move on to something else in the meantime. Um, it's time to talk, ladies and gentlemen, about the elephant in the room. Doctor Who. While we were gone, the BBC announced that a woman would be playing the next incarnation of the Doctor. And I am absolutely outraged. I cannot believe that the BBC has done something so petty. It's just disgraceful and I may never watch the show again. Because as we all know, Tea Time with Matt came up with that idea first. And not only did they nick the idea, but they didn't cast Emily Caroline Edwards. It's like the last eight years of our campaigning didn't even happen. I am furious. Oh, man. Ugh. But it's not the first time Doctor Who writers have pinched stuff from this show. Oh, no, 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 no. Far from it. In fact, here's a list of things that Doctor Who has pinched from Tea Time with Matt. Uh, and aliens turned up to ruin lunch uh, every other day. 
Uh, Derek was a regular character who worked as a cleaner and security guard at Scrapshaw Junction, uh, having quit his job with the Dalek Empire during, due to being refused a request for some sick leave. Uh, Derek's character later transitioned onto the uh, YouTube series The Adventures of Derek and Matt and The Cult of Scratchwood, uh, which is essentially a sitcom about me sharing a flat with some Daleks. Now, Stephen Moffat pinched this idea not once, but twice. Friendly Daleks featured in the Series 7 episode Asylum of the Daleks with the character of Osman Oswald, and again in the Series 8 story Into the Dalek, with a broken Dalek called Rusty is blatant. Second one, returning villains in disguise. In 2010, we performed a sketch entitled Planet of the Huggable Teddy Bears. In it, Emily Edwards went to Stephen Moffat to argue with him about a Valentine's Day special that he'd written. It was revealed that Stephen Moffat wasn't actually Stephen Moffat at all, but was in fact Russell T. Davis in disguise. Russell had apparently kidnapped the real Stephen Moffat and taken his place. Intending to make the series a laughing stop so that the BBC would be able to come back. Stephen was clearly unimpressed with this sketch, because he nicked the idea for the series 10 episode, World Enough and Time. In this story, a character called Razor takes care of the Doctor's companion, Bill Parks, for a whole decade, before revealing that he's actually a past incarnation of the Master in disguise. Which is rather necessary when you happen to be someone's former prime minister. Third, Time Lords flirting with previous incarnations. Also in 2010, we performed another sketch entitled The Last Doctor. In it, Emily travelled back in time to confront the Daleks and the 11th Doctor, as portrayed by Matt Smith. At the end of the sketch, Emily's Doctor admits she thinks the Eleventh Doctor is kind of cute, and the two flirt outrageously before disappearing into the TARDIS to... Well, I think it's probably best not to think about that too much. In the Series 10 finale, The Doctor Falls, the Master and Missy, a future incarnation of the Master, flirt outrageously with each other. While it was funny in the context of Tea Time with Matt, it's honestly just a bit awkward. Stephen, if you're going to steal my ideas, at least do it in a context that isn't creepy, yeah? Number four, ridiculous spin-offs. In a 2011 sketch entitled The Spin-Off Media of Doom, Russell T. Davis returns to trap the Doctor in a script for the act spin-off show K9 and Company. He also reveals he plans to write a rubbish spin-off entitled Time Tots of Gallifrey. Patrick Ness, acclaimed young adult author and obviously a fan of Tea Time with Matt, pinched this idea and wrote Class, a Doctor Who spin-off set in Coal Hill School, or as it is now known, the Coal Hill Academy, as obviously with all the alien invasions taking place there, the GCSE results for the whole school are atrocious. Featuring the exploits of a group of six formers, Class shows this gang of obnoxious teenagers struggling with schoolwork, relationships, literal amputation, seriously, and alien life forms that want to murder everyone in the school, followed by the planet. Also along for the ride is Miss Quill, a teacher at the teacher, a teacher at the school who isn't what she seems. Ooh. There's also a series arc about one of the sixth formers being the sole surviving member of an alien race whose planet got destroyed, who happens to be a prince of that species, and flat shares with Ms. Quill, who is duty-bound to protect him thanks to an alien parasite in her brain which will kill her if he comes to harm. And seriously, this whole thing is totally ridiculous! It's no wonder the whole show got cancelled after one series. Even the awesome plot twist at the end, which set up a conspiracy involving the Weeping Angels, wasn't enough to save it. I mean, dear God, Patrick, if you're going to copy my ideas, at least copy a decent one. Ah. And that, folks, was a list of things that Tea Time with Matt has licked from... Or no, no, the Doctor Who, rather, has nicked from Tea Time with Matt. Granted, that does happen the other way quite a lot as well, but still, you know, don't nick my ideas. Uh, Chibnall, you and me need to have words before you start the next series, okay? I got my eye on you. Here's some more music. It's David Bowie and fame.
any second now. Okay, I think we fixed the technical difficulties. Bren, are you there? No. Oh, for goodness sake. Ah! What is wrong with this thing? Why isn't it working? Arr! Right, um, okay. Let's, uh... Arr! Let's have another look. Default speakers. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, high definition audio device. Yep, fine, fine. Uh, what about this? Oh dear, just amuse yourselves for a minute, folks. This is ridiculous. Uh, oh, hang on. If we disable that, what does that do? Oh, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. 
might have something. Hold on. Don't hold your breath, but <laughs> see if this works. Come on. Come on, do me a solid here, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on, little speakers. Come on, little speakers. I'm a real failure. No, still not happening. Uh, right. Playback devices. Playback devices. Apply more duct tape. Uh, check the strip you've got between the yogurt pots. Yeah. It's... This is just getting seriously embarrassing now. Um... Oh, hold on. What, what just... What was that? Did something... Hmm. Reverse the polarity of the neutron flow, says Bren. It might, might come to that. Um. Uh, okay, I'm going to play another song, and we'll try and fix the technical problems. And I'll be back in a minute. I'm so sorry, guys. Here's a song about cats. A subject many are approaching at rap among the show both in a boat i know i'm so full of crap but i won't be complete without pen and an ode to the fact that i feel most at home stroking a cat i feel his paws on my shoulder so i turn and i'm poking it back he's my knees and i know he's cozy the chaps hoping to doze in my lap it's fairly safe to say i'm open to that because i'm most at home stroking a cat jimmy i'm stroking a cat sammy seeing those in my lap patty there's few feelings closer than that I'm at home when I'm stroking a cat Behind the ears, no wonder the chin Tickle the tummy and feel the fluff on your skin I had a cold heart, but that frost was gonna melt Because your fine fluffy fur was the softest thing I felt Put me in contact with my lost and inner self But gosh, you drop into the most obnoxious thing I've smelt If Jay-Z had a baby with a crazy cat lady Their DNA would mutate to make me It may be crazy that a cradle cat's in place of babies But you wouldn't make me change my behaviour if you paid me Maybe it's love, perhaps it's toxoplasmosis Honestly, I'm kind of shocked that I wrote this I'm too far gone, I'm lost and I'm hopeless Put a poster on the lamppost for me and hope someone will notice Jimmy, I'm stroking a cat Sammy Seeing those in my lap Patty There's few feelings closer than that I'm at home when I'm stroking a cat Behind the ears, no wonder the chin Tickle the tummy and feel the fluff on your skin I try not to treat you anthropomorphically But damn, if you could talk to me That'd be awesome See, I need to reassure you That I'll always be here for you Though we are mere mortal beings I would run a mile for every single minute That I fear for you I'm the loyalist But to me, you are the real royal Developed and bred up as a vicious predator I found it tricky to picture So you rip that stick of feathers up You're like a teddy bear But sensing it with agency That's why I savor the sentiment You deign to play with me The wide world is dangerous Home to haven sweet And if you need love enough I'm sure we have a vacancy Jimmy I'm stroking a cat Sammy Seeing those in my lap Patty There's few feet it's closer than that I'm at home when I'm stroking a cat Behind the ears, no wonder the chin Tickle the tummy and feel the fluff on your skin Aside from mewling, I'll never get to hear you speak But we communicate in other ways Enough to know you're unique The pet sanctuary was a feline who's who Perusing kittens like I was trying on a new shoe I wonder what the factor was that made me choose you Don't know, perhaps you chose me and I just knew too You had a true cuteness I never grew used to It rips my heart apart knowing that soon I'll lose you I don't want to lose you Okay, folks, we might have Bren back now. Let's give this a whirl. Let's come back to the studio. Bren, are you there? Arrgh! Oh, for God's sake. It was literally working. Why is it not doing it now? It's... Uh, no. It's... Oh, uh, God. Hang on. No, I'm getting nothing out. What's going on? Ah. This is ridiculous. Have Gangnam Style. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. The problem is, 
Yes. Gangnam Style Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Sai there and Gangnam Style. We're hoping against all hope. Please, God, work. You be quiet. So we've got Bren. Bren, can you hear me? Oh. Yes, he's there! Kind of! Um, what's what's happened to the volume? Hold on. Bren, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes! Oh, it's, a it's a miracle! Uh, do you have hallelujah? Uh, hang on a minute, I've got something like that. Oh, yes! Oh yeah, who the man? Not me. Never doing that again. You know Bren. what? Actually, I think if we ever have a problem again, if we play Gundam style, maybe that'll solve the, all the problems. Maybe, maybe that should be our go-to thing from now on. Ah, oh, anyway, do you want your theme music back again, Bren? What? Do you want your theme music again, Bren? No, no, I, we, we got it. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. Fair oh, enough. my God. Uh, oh, dear. Right. You know, I think that's also one of the problems of being famous. Technical difficulties. Absolutely. It's it's something you come up against a lot on this show, definitely. Oh. Mm. So what are we going to discuss net first? Uh, the wiki or... Uh, yeah, let's... Um, now we're here, I'm going to ignore you completely and we're going to have a look at the Wikipedia page. Yeah, yeah, uh, we got to... Okay. We got. We got to get back on track. Okay, cool. Let's move on swiftly. Right. Uh, up next, folks, we're going to have a look at the tea time with Matt Wiki, uh, which I 
set up. Uh, and of course, it is a thing you can all edit. So if you want to contribute and add stuff of your own or add your own pages, go nuts. We, I definitely want your help with this. So let's take a look at it right now. Now, if I've done that properly, you should be able to see this on the screen right now. Hold on. Uh... I did not do that right. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, why did the sound suddenly cut out? Fail. Fail. I'm a real failure. Yeah, so you should be able to see it now, folks. Am I right? Can you see that? Just, just. Uh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, we see it. Okay, this, folks, is the Tea Time with Matt wiki page. Uh, it is. Uh, essentially a encyclopedia of everything to do with Tea Time with Matt. Uh, so if I go up to navigation here, uh, there's a number of different sections. We've got About, which features the history of the show and all manner of things. Uh, we've got characters who feature in the show, uh, features from the show, uh, stuff about previous episodes, all of the people who are involved in the show, and MISC. Uh, I've, I've started quite a lot of it. The history of Tea Time with Matt took me ages. Like, we're, we're literally talking, it took me about a week to sort of <coughs> through that. So, you know, I hope, I hope it's worth it. Um, right, uh, so, gonna look to you guys in the chat room now. What do you want to have a look at? Uh, we've... No, I think the history of Tea Time with Matt is probably a good starting point. So, uh, let's go back and have a little look-see there. So, if we go to navigation about and click on history of tea time with Matt and as you can see here we've got a complete list of everything to do with the history of the show uh, including prehistory uh, which I'm going to read out for those of you on TuneIn who haven't got the video the first appearance of tea time with Matt predates the first episode by around 5,000 years Archaeologists in Egypt have found hieroglyphs which depict the arrival of a man from a far-off land in a horseless silver chariot. The hieroglyphs are not very complimentary, describing the man as an idiot and not even worth enslaving. The hieroglyphs name the idiot as Tia Time. Tea Time also appears to have been present in Boston, Massachusetts on the 16th of December 1773. Eyewitness accounts from the Boston Tea Party describe the presence of an English man dressed in a velvet jacket and a waistcoat. The man appeared to be very distressed by the actions of the crowd, shouting, That's not how you make tea! You need to boil the water first! <laughs> you know, I, I almost want to imagine someone could probably have done that during the actual Boston Tea Party. What you want about tea time did you know that's that's the great thing about anthropomorphic personifications and time machines yeah so uh on this you page, don't just observe history you make it exactly so uh yeah you can read here all about the conception of the show uh the years it was on mob radio uh what happened in 2012 uh, what happened in 2013, and so on and so forth. 2017 is quite short at the moment because we haven't done it yet. Uh, so, yeah, that's happening. Uh, anything else you guys would like to have a look at? Uh, I am all of yours. Let's see. Uh, Mr. Spud Nugget says Mud Radio. Okay, let's have a look at Mud Radio. Uh, let's go back to the navigation, turn on Mud Radio, and back we go. So, uh, for the benefit of our listeners, Mud Radio was the student radio station at Middlesex University, based in the Student Union building at Trent Park Campus. The station was broadcast online at mudradio.com, with several shows also using their own Stickam accounts to broadcast video from the studio. Just having a little sip of Prosecco. Matt was introduced to Mud Radio by Screw Love, an ex-student of Middlesex University and host of The Screw Love Show. Matt joined the station as a DJ in October 2009, broadcasting Tea Time with Matt on Thursdays from 2 till 4. Along with Tea Time with Matt, Matt frequently appeared as a guest on several other shows, including The Screw Love Show and Cheesy Chips Retro Hits. In January 2010, Matt and Screw Love started working on The Screw Love Show a web series loosely based on Screw's radio show. The main characters in the show were both radio presenters, so most of the episodes were filmed in or around the Mud Radio studio. And so on and so forth. You get the idea. 
Ooh, um, the 24-hour tea break. Oh, that one. That one's not got a Wikipedia page yet. I've not written it because I'm I'm not clever at this. No, basically... Plus, oh, man, there was a lot of faffing about that time. <laughs> yeah, it was. That was so It was fun, fun to do and oh, uh, raised uh, plenty of money for that, for Cherry. Hell, yeah. No, that was great. Uh, both of them switched off the radio, says Sterling. Yep, yeah, that's a section from the history page. Yep. Yeah, Totally go and read this. If you want to add anything or edit anything, please do. Uh, we, I want this to be fun, and I want it to be a resource for kind of our new listeners to have a read about. Uh, me, Tina says... Or at the very least, be an archive of everything in case something ever happens to anyone. Essentially, yes. Uh, so, me, Tina looks, wants to look at Ken Lee. Okay, let's have a look at Ken Lee. Uh, so, back we go. Characters and Ken Lee. Enough said, really. Taliba Dibu Dilchu is the simple entry there. All right, and uh, let's get back to the show. Also, in my entry, I now have a pet Bulbasaur, as well as a diva of a Dalek. That's true. Where is Dalek Danny? Haven't seen him for a while. Oh, uh, you know, off eliminating uh, the competition, as he calls it. You know. Actors. Mm, fair enough. I, I know where he's coming from, you know, being that I'm famous now, it's, you know, it's mm. a constant problem. Yeah, I think... Yeah. Now, he claims he didn't have anything to do with Robin Williams, but I don't know. It's, I still I think that's know. too soon, man. Too soon. It's always yeah. going to be too soon. Yeah, right. It's always too soon. Oh. All right, give me the fail jingle. Okay. You asked for it. I, I deserve Fail. Fail. I'm a failure. Oh, dear. Yep, I'm a failure. <laughs> uh, I'm a failure. I'm a failure. <laughs> I, I, I just love it. Where'd you get that line? Uh, that, that's from a sitcom uh, called Some Mothers Do Have Em. Uh, it's a, a character played by Michael Crawford. Um, Some Mothers Do Have Em is basically... Uh, it's kind of... Oh, what's the best way to describe it? Um, it's like very physical comedy. He plays a character in it where who's a bit not an idiot as such. He just keeps getting into trouble. And um, in one of the in one of the episodes, he goes to see a therapist, uh, and the therapist says to him, "Yes, you are a failure at everything you've ever done." And he goes away believing this is a compliment. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's where that comes from. Oh dear. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, check out the Tea Time with Matt Wikipedia page. The address is teatimewithmatt.wikia.com. That's teatimewithmatt.wikia.com. And uh, have a go, have an edit. We'll come back to you next week, see if you guys have done anything with it. That, that'd be mm -hmm. fun. Okay, I'm going to play one more song, and then we're going to do the news, because... We're, we're way behind schedule already. Uh, Brent, yeah. I'm going to play your song, which I think was from Undertale, am I right? Undertale the musical, to be more precise. There a, we go. a sort of, uh, basically they put lyrics to all the songs in like Undertale and present the entire series as like one big musical play. Nice. Highly recommended. And this is Death by Glamour, the what you may know as the theme for battling Metaton, who, in Undertale, well, he's the man you, you all want to see. You'll, the lyrics will speak for themselves, trust me. Okie dokie. Death by Glamour, Hit everybody. It!
Tea Time with Matt. Because dunkers do it best. Uh, because I suck, that apparently is the wrong version. Uh, so... <laughs> And now I'm choking to death. Tonight's going well. Really well. Oh, dear. Right, uh, I'll pick up that uh, that later. Sorry, Bren. I feel bad now. Hang on. Bren? Where, where you gone, dude? I'm here. You're still there? Good, good. That's all right, then. Um, uh, well, uh, what are we doing with our lives? Uh, where was I? Scrolling through my list. Failing. Here we are. That's what we're doing. Yeah, uh, there we go. I've got to say, this episode has really taken it out of me a bit. It's been, uh, you know, um, it's been a bit nightmarish, you know, but I'm okay. Uh, that is the price of fame! It is the price of fame. Uh, so in order to keep me going, I need to make sure that I eat a good breakfast. So I begin every day with a fresh bowl of Steamios! Steamios! My favourite! <laughs> Steamio cereal are a delicious part of your complete nutritious breakfast, flavoured with a generous sprinkling of real Welsh steam coal. Containing 170% of your daily recommended sugar allowance per serving, you'll not just be bouncing off the walls, you'll be flying through them! I ate some before the show today and I can literally hear all of the colours! Like, I can really... <laughs> I, like, I can really really hear them it's it's actually making it quite hard to concentrate also that steam engine's eyes are following me around the room and i think it can see into my soul no no it can't see through your soul it can just see through time and space and yet not in front of it steamios they're <laughs> adequate <laughs> da -da 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 -da. ah Another sponsor there. Right, um, Bren, you've sent me a link, so I'm going to see about playing that. Hold on. Uh, just... You want to just get back to the news so, you know, we... we yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, you schedule. know what, actually, that's a good shout, so let's do that. Let's do the news. Here we are. Where's the jingle? Find the jingle. All of the jingles. This is going so well. You can tell I'm out of practice, can't you? This is a Tea Time with Matt news update. Our top story tonight. Australia's multi-million dollar broadband network is under attack from cockatoos. What? The National Broadband Network company says it has spent tens of thousands of dollars so far fixing cables chewed by the birds. Australian broadband is already criticised for being slow. According to a recent report, it ranks 50th in the world for internet speed. Oh dear. Yikes. NBN estimates the bill will rise sharply the more damage is uncovered. Engineers attending sites have found spare cables chewed and frayed. The culprits are cockatoos, a type of parrot which normally eats fruits, nuts, wood and bark. NBN has had to replace power and fibre cables at a cost of tens of thousands of dollars each time. So far, they say they have spent 80,000 Australian dollars, or 47,000 post-Brexit pounds. Ex eat it, exit, uh, eating cables, I've got Brexit on the brain, would have to be an acquired taste, says animal uh, behaviourist, I'm doing well, Gisela Kaplan. It's not their usual style, she said, suggesting that the colour or the position of the cables could have attracted the birds. They're constantly sharpening their beaks, and as a result will attack and tear apart anything they come across. Unfortunately, they've developed a liking to our cables. These birds are unstoppable when in a swarm, co-project manager Sheridan Breslin said in an article on the company's website on Friday. I guess that's Australia for you. If the spiders and snakes don't get you, the cockies will. It's called a gun. Just shoot it into the air. <laughs> You don't even have to shoot him! Just shoot him in the air, man! <laughs> Dear. In other news, a German man feared a monster courgette he found in his garden was an unexploded World War II bomb and called the police. The 5 kilogram, or 11 pound in real money, courgette has probably been thrown over a hedge into the 81-year-old's garden, police said. Luckily, no evacuation was required in Breten, a town near... I'm not even going to pronounce that, in southwest Germany. 
The 40 centimeter or 16 inch vegetable really did look like a bomb, police said. I'm not so sure about that. I gotta be honest, I don't think it would have looked like a bomb. Do they have a picture included on this? Uh, no, I don't, I'm afraid. I, uh, that was oh, come on! Serious. If they're gonna do... Uh, I, I will go and find a picture. I'm, go I'm gonna do that during our next... Uh, next yeah, next honestly, because yeah. if they're... Come on, if you're gonna yeah. put a news story about a vegetable that looks like a bomb, you should at least give us the picture okay. so we can... Fair enough, I will go away and I will find the picture. Uh, not you. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about you know the news article. I'm sure there is a there was a photo in the news article. I just don't think I copied it with it. So I'll go I'll go away and find that in a minute. All right. Uh, many unexploded bombs dropped by the RAF or the US Air Force have been unearthed in Germany, usually during construction work. Once police had reassured him that the early morning call out. Ugh. Thank you, T. Ferry. Once police yeah. had reassured him following the early morning call out, the pensioner disposed of the courgette himself. Brave. <laughs> and finally, a rocket launch in Virginia was aborted at the last moment when a small aircraft flew into restricted airspace. The unmanned cargo ship was about to be launched en route to the International Space Station when Mission Control called, Abort! 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 They had spotted a small aircraft flying in restricted airspace at 500 feet near Wallops Island. The cargo ship was filled with 7,400 pounds of food, supplies, equipment and science experiments for the International Space Station. Orbital ATK, which has a 1.9 billion dollar or 1.4 billion pound contract with NASA to supply the space station, said there were no issues until an aircraft flew into restricted airspace adding that they would be ready to go tomorrow morning. Uh, which was, I believe, some time ago, so, yeah. Uh, we now have a picture of this unexploded bomb, so I'm going to try and add that to uh, the stream real quickly. Hold on a second while we do that. We've lost Bren. Where's Bren gone? Dude! I don't know what's going on. Hold on. We've, lo we've lost your camera footage, I think. Hold on. There we are. We got you back. Sweet. Okay, we're good. Right. Let's let's try and add this image to the stream, uh, and I'll um I might upload this to the Facebook page for those of you on TuneIn. So here it is. This is the courgette in question. Uh, what do we think, gang? Um, does it look like a it. bomb? Looks like. I kind of gotta wait. Up. Uh, mm, <laughs> I don't know. I was. Oh my god. It. It knocked my camera. Uh, wow. <laughs> it's so not bomb-like that it knocked my camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, that's a courgette. Looks more like a slim aubergine to me, said me, Tina. Yeah, it it, it kind of looks like a, like a really old eggplant. Mm. Uh, Sterling says, that is not a bomb. Rory says, looks like a courgette to me. Bellingsley Central says, I've never seen a courgette that colour before. Interesting. Like I said, it looks like an old eggplant to me. Yeah. I think that is a unanimous that is not a bomb. So, yeah. I mean, I guess maybe, you know, that tip there, maybe kind of like the end of like a missile kind of thing, but... Maybe, I'm like, but it's unlikely. But like he's saying it looked like a bomb, not a missile. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm not convinced, I'm afraid. Anyway... Uh, and that, folks, was the news. If you have any comments to make on any of the stories we discussed, please do let me know in the chat room. Uh, you can also email me at teatimewithmatt at gmail.com, tweet me at teatimewithmatt, or follow us on Facebook at uh, www.facebook.com forward slash teatimewithmatt. That was a Tea Time with Matt news update. Oi, the world is just... Mad? I think that's the word you were looking for, mad. It's that's mad. putting it lightly. Yeah. I think, I think Wonderland might be a little more sane every, nowadays. Do you reckon? It's, have, have we got to that stage, do you think? Possibly! Mm, okay, I'm just... Like, yeah, just... Just about close. <laughs> I'm 
Me, Tina says, if you have been affected by any of the stories on tonight's episode of Tea Time with Matt, just have a cup and it'll all be better. Shh. Shh. Oh my god! Bear Barrington makes sense. That must be why cats jump at cucumbers. They think they're all bombs! Genius! Genius! So that means that man was a cat in a past life! Dun, dun, dun. Hold on a minute, I think I've got a sound effect for this eventuality. Hold on. I was that was that was perfect. Was like, oh. <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> right, I've actually got your song up now, Bren. Do you want to play it? Yes, the the Undertale the musical Death by Glamour. Here we Please go, enjoy, then. people. Death by Glamour from Undertale, the musical there by Toby Fox. That's that's pretty good. I like that. I enjoy that very much. Uh, I, honestly, Undertale, the musical, it, it was astounding. Like, this guy, you know, he got all these got really good singers together. They were able to make great remixes of the songs and just 
really make it feel like you're watching a real play and all that. That is. Now, granted, they took a few liberties, like condensing or a couple of things together. Like the first fight isn't against the dummy, but it said naps to Bluke using his theme. But the point is, it still works. Yeah, that's, it sounded pretty awesome. I love I love the talent on show there. I must try. To oh yeah, this. and let's face it, Metaton pretty much is the embodiment of fame. Yeah. Like, he's the highest rated show in the underground. In fact, he's the only show in the underground. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. Well, yeah, he's... I mean, he has great sites, such as... Great shows, such as his own regular show, his news show, his cooking show, Cooking with a Killer Robot! <laughs> I wish I was making that up. That actually happens, and... By the way, Cooking with a Killer Robot. I want to see that. I want to see, like, a robot version of Gordon Ramsay. And, you know, that's what happens when he dies. They put his brain into a robot, and they just keep the show going. Dalek version of Gordon Ramsay. Oh, yes! That's going to happen. I'm gonna I want, that you know what? Break. That would be the most awesome Dalek ever. He has, like, a chef's hat on. Oh. It's just each. Oh dear. Anyway, we must move swiftly on because I have tons of content to get through. Now, All right, uh, just before that last song, uh, the tea fairy bought me a cup of tea, which I'm very grateful for because it's been it's been stressful, man. I've, uh, yeah. I hear that today has been stressful. It has. Now I only use the very best loose leaf English breakfast tea uh, from Tea Times. Uh, tea Times. Use only the finest quality tea leaves grown on the slopes of Mount Tesno Fafudja and handpicked mm -hmm. by the local children. It's not cruel, they love doing it. Tea Times, the taste of exploitation. Now available from around the back of Tesco. Speaking of exploitation, when am I getting paid? Uh, you're not, ever. Can we just talk about oh. how awesome this gra this graphic I mocked up for this is, by the way? I'm, yeah, honestly, that is. That, this that is, is my really favourite one. I love this image of the train from India and the, the, the background. It's just, oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm, looks I like my take, keyboard is dead. I can take no oh, credit batteries. for batteries. I can take no credit for the actual artwork, of course, uh, but I did sort of assemble it from many different sources. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. By tea times. Okay, let's uh, let's do something else while we're racing through my list. Uh, here we are. Uh, we're gonna have time for a story time, or oh yeah, we'll definitely have time for that. Don't you worry, I will make time. <sighs> now Me. you know, being famous, uh, you find that you encounter uh, lots and lots of facts, all of them true, but to slightly different degrees. Uh, for instance, um, like how it's true that I am astonishingly charming and incredibly handsome, but it's also a fact and that And modest! I'm, don't forget modest! Don't forget modest! Uh, but it's also a fact that I went to the moon for breakfast this morning. See? It's, you know, it's all... They're all Ooh. true. It's, uh, it's simply moon just... Moon tea! Moon tea. It's simply just a matter of perspective. And I've lost my jingle as well, so that's going well to begin with. Come on, jingle, where you going? Where you going? I know you're somewhere. Here we are. Uh, yeah, so as I was saying, it's all, in fact, a matter of perspective. Welcome to Tea Time with Max Alternative Facts. Ah. Right, let's kick off. Lego bricks were invented in 1822 by Dr. Hamish Brick. He came up with the name after a pickpocket tried to steal the prototype bricks from his jacket pocket. When Dr. Brick grabbed the would-be thief by the ear, the boy screamed, Lego! Lego! Lego with me, governor! Tom Baker, who is known mainly for his role in the long-running British sitcom Tom Baker and Company, has recently been cast in the upcoming reboot of Thomas the Tank Engine.
Baker will play a brand new character named the average weighted in representative of the Department for Transport. The character will be introduced in the first episode of the show, entitled The Fat Controller Loses the Franchise. Dogs are entirely fictional. They were invented by a consortium of cats who were fed up of being caught damaging household furniture and wanted to blame it on somebody else. Global warming was triggered by the Russians in 1991, when Gorbachev ordered the deployment of the country's top secret space duvet. The temperature of the Earth is set to increase further in 2018, as the Chinese are due to launch their orbital hot water bottle. And finally, our final fact for today, clocks measure time in the wrong direction. Most clocks show time progressing in a clockwise direction. In reality, time actually travels sideways, with an occasional U-turn. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Tea Time with Matt's Alternative Facts. Uh, all true, uh, none of those were made up at all, they, they are all from sources that I could quote, but I'm not going to, so shut up. Let's ah, move on. Great. <laughs> no, no, not you. It's my keyboard, I think. Oh, your keyboard's I think my working. keyboard died. Oh, that sucks, man. Okay. I can't type anything. No! Goodness me. Oh, dear. Uh, what's going so on in the chat? Batteries? Room? No, I think it's... Uh, Rory says, Night Vale Jingle? Yep, Jingle from Welcome to Night Vale. Great podcast. Check it out. Uh, do, 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 let me see. Uh, Roy says, I can see the cats doing that. Well, they, they did. Like I said, it's a fact. Yeah. Um, if in doubt, blame the Russians, says Billingsley Central. Well, obviously, because it's their fault. You just heard it on alternative facts. You know, come on, you're acting like I've made this stuff up. Uh, do, 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 the last fact is real gold, says Rory. It is. I, I quite enjoyed that one. It's very good. Uh, let's all bow our heads for a moment in remembrance of Ren's keyboard, says Bear Barrington of the Barefootshire clan. Yeah, let's see. Maybe it is the Barrington. Maybe I need new batteries or something. I don't know. While Bren is struggling to fix his keyboard, I'm going to play another song. Uh, this is Smash Mouth and All Star. Hey! That is a classic. The world is going to roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. No! No! What happened there? Come back, you sod! Ugh! Ugh! Fail, Jingle. Fail. I'm a real failure. And I've still got the alternative facts playing. This this show's going really well, isn't it? Oh dear. Shall we try that again? I said, shall we try that again? No, no, that's not it. That one. There we go. I hate everybody tonight. Not you guys.
Tea Time with Matt. Because Dunkers do it best. And you're listening, of course, to Tea Time with Matt. I'm going to bring Sterling in on this conversation because he asked me to. Sorry, Sterling, should have pre-warned you. Uh, give me a second here. Mm. You know, I do like a nice cup of tea. And Sterling should be joining us now. Hello, Sterling! Hello! Hello, welcome back. How are you doing, mate? Doing great. Yourself? Yeah, not doing too bad, thank you. Actually doing all Technical right. Technical difficulties aside. Well, yeah, you yeah, know, that's, that's the price of fame. You can't get away from the pitfalls of technical Speaking of fame, I guess you're, uh, I guess you're doing well being a, a spokesperson for Amazon. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess, I, I guess so. <laughs> I was, I wasn't going to say anything, but, uh, oh dear. No, I actually work for Amazon, actually. Ah, right, that explains it. Ooh, can you get me a discount? <laughs> no. You know a guy who knows a guy? No. <laughs> oh. Incidentally, Tea Time with Matt uh, offers hefty gift d uh, discounts from Cash for Stuff uh, round the back of Morrison's. Uh, see honestjeff.com forward slash Tea Time with Matt. Moving swiftly. Only if I can get my Pocky. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right. Um, what was I doing with my life? I've completely lost track of this show, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's all gone a bit wrong. Um... Common sense advice. Let's do that, shall we? That sounds good to me. Uh, <laughs> so you've done something to become famous. Congratulations. Woohoo! But with fame comes responsibility. Boo! Things are all fantastic now, but in a few weeks, the fame will doubtless become tiresome and you'll start to be sick of the limelight. Don't worry. As someone who's been famous for all of ten minutes, I can help. Here's Tea Time with Matt's common sense advice on how to cope with fame. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to play a common sense advice sound bed. Number one, stick close to the art that got you famous. Becoming famous can be a time consuming job in itself, so try not to get caught up in it. If you're not careful, you'll become one of those celebrities that's only famous for being famous. For example, if, like me, you're a YouTube sensation, make sure you continue to release new content that your fans will enjoy. <coughs> Incidentally, yes, there are more Dalek videos coming. Stop asking and maybe I'll feel inclined to make more. Number two, <laughs> hold your ego in check. If, like me, you're talented, charming, drop-dead handsome, it can be difficult to become vain, not to become vain and self-centred. It's not difficult to become vain and self-centred at all, it's actually really easy. No, uh, if you feel like you're becoming too big-headed, simply Google your name and read the thousands of pages of vitriol that people have written about you. It's guaranteed to bring you crashing back down to earth and remind you of the fact that you have flaws and in the grand scheme of the universe, none of your achievements truly matter. Oh, rip. Speaking of which, number three, limit your expectations. Our society sets standards for its heroes that are not possible to live up to, and then criticises and judges them for not maintaining those standards. Frankly, screw society. You don't owe anyone anything, and society is made up of a bunch of hypocrites. Live by the values you had before you were famous, and sod what anyone else thinks. It's not like changing yourself will make them like you anymore. Do you know what that's so they're genuinely the first bit of common sense advice I think I've ever done that I actually agree with in real life. Yes. <laughs> that, there's a first time for everything. Oh dear. Ah. Uh, next one. Uh, use social media strategically. That's number five, is that? No, number four, I think. Yes, number four. Uh, Twitter used to be brilliant. You could engage with fans, have civilised discussions, and everyone would have a good time. Sadly, that is no longer the case, because the second you post anything, people will find an excuse to start a flame war. Basically, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just say, I like burgers, and all of a sudden you, you've unleashed hell upon the world. Oh dear. Best thing to do is only tweet about whatever your latest thing is, then turn off your phone and try not to think about the firestorm kicking off in your notifications. Number five, or four, or six, I forget. Whatever. Take security precautions. Fame does come with certain risks. Specifically, people getting all up in your personal space, breaking into your house, sending you creepily affectionate or abusive mail, or straight up trying to assassinate you. 
You'd be well advised to hire a full-time bodyguard and install security measures in your home. I, I think Honest Jeff has their own series of bodyguards. Literally about to say that. I highly recommend Honest Jeff's Bodyguards and Security Consultants Limited. Honest Jeff has years of experience in home invasion, harassment, and assassination. So it has the skills and experience. Preventing or committing? No comment. So it has the skills. <laughs> <laughs> so it has the skills and expertise to ensure that you and your family are safe. For a price. For the people on the outside. <laughs> For a price, obviously. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> your soul. Of your shit. Mother. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> Next one. Realize that fame is fickle. But keep your standards up and don't compromise your integrity. Incidentally, I am available. <laughs> I am available for opening all sizes of envelopes, and I am free this panto season. <laughs> you having a little hard time with your discussion there, Maddie? <laughs> Tight size available upon request. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I've lost it. I'm gone. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm abort, gone. abort. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> Finally, above all, don't forget the people who helped you on the way up. Angela, the co-writer, is amazing. I'm going to buy her a DeLorean. Hang on, I didn't write that bit. Angela. <laughs> <sighs> and that was in my script. It says here that Dalek Danny is the greatest. Dalek who has ever lived. Suck it, Derek. <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, that was tea time with Matt's common sense advice on how to cope with fame. <sighs> oh, goodness me. Uh, Are you okay, man? Uh, do, you need, do you need something to drink or something? No, I'm alright. I started coughing partway through and started laughing and that set me off. Hang on. Have a swig of tea. Anyone ever think that they could... You think it's possible to die laughing because... Like, I, I swear, I've nearly passed out a few times uh, on, on a few moments. It's gotta be like, possible. Yeah. It's gotta be possible, yeah. I reckon. If the Joker has taught me anything, yes, it is. Yeah, like, I've been watching sort of Teching 101's live streams of going through the four kids version of One Piece. Oh, Say God. no more. <laughs> it is hilarious. Oh, dear. Especially when there is a, vil a, a filler villain near the end of the series... And I wish I was making this up, but he is called Wicked Dick. Like, is there I remember a that guy. It? Oh, it's, man. And they don't even change it for four kids. Like, they'll edit the cleavage. They'll edit the book spots. They'll edit. <laughs> they will cut episodes. Or, you know, edit guns look like squirt guns. Or that infamous hammer on a spring thing. But the uh, heck, no one will notice. Called Wicked dick! Only the and purists will notice. Like, they could have easily changed it to Wicked Rick. You know, you could have easily added the the wanted poster instead of it saying dick. It says Rick, but no, they kept it. I'm, I'm going to have to add at this point uh, a reference to a particularly good show. I'm Wicked Rick! Wubba lubba dub dub! Uh, <laughs> no, oh sorry. yeah, there's another... There's another way to get fame. Become a meme! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Let's have a look in the I chat room. Mr. Meeseeks, look at me. me. Uh, I'm Mr. Meeseeks! <laughs> <laughs> I'm only here because Bren roped me into this. <laughs> oh, dear. And right. Matt's only here because Bren roped him into this. <laughs> <laughs> but what about Alfie? And he Matt's only here, here because this. Derek roped all of us into this. Well, and Derek's in on this because he has nothing better to do! <laughs> this got meta for a minute. <laughs> 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 do, 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 do. Hey. Let's see the chat room. Um, Meteor wow. says, They do some good discounts at Honest Jeff. My last purchase only cost me the one internal organ. <laughs> <laughs> Just one heart, so I had to spare, says me, Tina. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, 
right, Billings Essential says, I think many more people need to remember sod what anyone else thinks. Good advice. Thank you. Uh, Bear Barrington says, famous or not, it's good advice. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Mitina says, I once saw a massive argument kick off in a vegetarian forum about the correct preparation of bruschetta. <laughs> what? I know. What the hell? Goodness me. Uh, Billings, he said, I've lost count of how many angry vegans I've seen on McDonald's, KFC, other meat-related posts. It makes for... Yeah, pretty much. Reading. Oh, dear. Oh, like, God. let's face it, I think I know why vegans are always so angry. Why is that? They're not getting enough meat on their bones. They're not happy. <laughs> Would you have to be happy if you couldn't eat a goddamn steak? Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Oh. Give me a fail. A fail. <laughs> fail. Family. Hang on. Fail jingle. Where is it? There we go. Epic fail. Here we go. Fail. Fail. I'm a real fail. I am so what sorry. The children. <laughs> the children. Think of the children. I'll kill you. I am thinking of the children. I couldn't the eat children. a whole one. Um. <laughs> I'm just here for the comments. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> oh, okay, guys, coming up in the next few minutes, we're going to do tea time with Matt's bedtime story, and that means I've got to recover my notebook. Excuse me a moment. Ah, I'm dropping Obvious everything. words, fame, of course. Fame. How about wicked dick? No, I'm just kidding. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do that. How about no? <laughs> I say we let him go. <laughs> Uh, this is getting weird. Can we play a song? Yeah, we'll play yeah, a song. Let, let, let's do that. Uh, okay. We got anything by David Bowie? Uh, we've played something by David Bowie, I think, already. Oh, yeah. Hang on, what's next? How about that Gordon list? Lightfoot song I suggested oh, earlier? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's go with that. That's next on my playlist, too, so we'll do that in a second. Uh, yeah, if you want to contribute to the bedtime story, we need five words. Fame is obviously the first one. Uh, so, uh, send your suggestions in in the chat room, folks. Or you know what? Wicked Rick. Let's go with that. Wicked Rick. Wicked Rick. <laughs> Daring me. Why okay. not? Why? Hey, not? at least if I, I didn't say wicked dick. <laughs> oh dear. This show will go down in history as being, if not the best executed show, it will go down in history as being A, the most controversial, and B, the most unintentionally funny. You so know incidentally, what? if you think that's the case, feel free to update the Tea Time with Matt Wiki. Good you point. know what I say? It's well, like thanks. that. It's like that really hilarious English dub of Ghost Story. It is the greatest and the worst dub in all of anime history. Oh dear. Okay, uh, let's play this song and uh, we'll get to the bedtime story shortly, folks. This is Gordon Lightfoot and the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald.
It's been a long day. Put the kettle on. It's tea time with Matt. It's definitely been a long show, that's for sure. Goodness me. Hey, so many problems. Uh, no. just, uh, Speaking of problems, guys, am I lagging real bad on y'all's end? Uh, no, uh, it's on my end. <coughs> okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, don't worry. You're all good. Uh, Sweet. Uh, looks like the lag train is moving on, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the Tea Time with Matt hype train. Why is it going very slowly? Because I only have a certain stretch of track filled out at the moment. <laughs> no, I, I like thought it was going to be a joke about the hype. Oh, man, that looks awesome. Hang on, I want to see if I can get that looking any bigger. Yeah, that is I, nice. I can get it bigger here, on my screen. Here, I'll center it for you. That looks great. Hold on, let me try and uh, resize the screen temporarily. Hold on. I'm gonna copy yeah, that's cool. Them. If I paste that, no, that's not what I want. I'm not that big a fan of model trains, but I can still appreciate why people like them. And it's got great sounds, too. Let's there see, turn the sound Make up real bigger. quick. That looks really good. That That's a step up from my hype train, I've got to be honest. That looks awesome. Yeah. And it's got crew talk sounds, too. Really? We approve. You win. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how well you can hear that or not. A, a little bit, yeah. That's pretty neat. I like that. I'll send you a video link to it running on my YouTube channel, and you can check it out when we're off the, when we're off the air. Yeah. yeah. Speaking I, of fame, there's also my YouTube channel. I've yes. been doing a lot of live streaming lately. Yes, I've seen. How's that going? It looks like it's gone well. Yeah, it's going pretty well. Sweet. And also, in other news, I was actually uh, I actually got to voice a character in the. Uh, the animated sci-fi series FTL: The Kestrel Adventures. Oh, it's awesome! Oh, brilliant! Well done, mate. That's great. Yeah, I, it, last episode, I'm the uh, panicked. Uh, uh, you know that event where, like, you know, our defense drones are here, and you either can, you know, use ion or have an NG on board, and you can basically, uh, you know, fix the defenses, and you'll get rewarded. Yeah, I'm the guy who's like. Hey, our, our drones are all are, are going nuts. They're shooting everything. It gets too close. Hey. <laughs> oh, congrats. And then dude. there's this awesome. awesome scene where the crew's NG, you know, one of the guys gives him, like, a Decker jacket from uh, Shadowrun, and then he just goes all hacking, like, he's entering the Matrix. It <laughs> awesome. Is, awesome. It is a really good series. Uh, yeah. I'm not just saying that because I was a part of it and I support it on Patreon. No, I support it on Patreon because it is completely underrated. I've like, watched flies the under the episodes. radar all the time. At least with Ask a Dalek, you know, people will always type in a Dalek. But finding, <laughs> you know, the FTL series, there's not a lot of animated series. No, that's true. No, I've been art style, I've myself I, lately. Yeah, I, I highly, highly recommend it. Please... Check it out when you ever get the chance. Gladly. Awesome stuff. It sounds good. Right. Uh, we've only got three words so far, guys. You, you need to pick the pace up. Uh, we've so far got uh, fame, courgette, synergy. What? No wicked Rick? Wicked Rick is going to be our main character. That much I have. Okay. Uh, how about infamy? Infamy. Okay, let's do it. Also, Synergy, nice Simpsons reference. Synergy. <laughs> oh, dear. I create Synergy in books that are cheat at bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lindsay Nagel. I really do. Ocelot, uh, says me team. Ocelot, yeah. Ocelot. I always there we go. It. Babu! <laughs> uh, oh, I gotta get back to rewatching uh, Archer. I freaking love that show. I just finished binge watching the whole the whole thing. It's seriously, I recommend Archer. It's brilliant. Yeah, definitely one of the best adult cartoons. Like for starters, they don't go over the top. They don't try to offend everyone. They're just trying to tell a funny story with a character that you both hate and really love. Yeah, it's. I, I think the comedy in Archer comes from the fact that every single character is entirely clueless. It's. <laughs> I, I, in fact, the only character I I <laughs> loathe is Mallory, but oh, that's only because that's, that's kind her of role. her point. That's her role. She's meant to be hated. You know, she's the like, boss that everyone hates. Like, I'm actually surprised. You know, they're all working at a secret agency. Like, 
I'm surprised no one has tried to kill her. Like, meanwhile, I have never seen a single episode of Archer. Watch it; it's brilliant. Right. All I know is that everyone I, who I have met nags me because of the guy's first name. Uh, yes, I, oh, do you know, I didn't even clock uh, Looks that. like my dad's here and looks like I'm going to be, uh... Hey, Dad! Say hello to Tea Time with Dad! Hello, hey, Brent's I, dad. Yeah, this is my Three friend Matt. This is, uh, what's your name? Sterling. 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 Yep, and of course, you know, the show is about close to wrapping up. Yeah. Sorry. Really? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know what, I'm going to have to go. I will see you all later. Okay, Brent, we'll see you next week, dude. You take care. See you, Brent. Look after yourself. See you soon. Okay. Well, on that note, we're going to play one more song while I come up with a story to tell you all. Uh, and we will take it from there. All right, guys, this is uh, Lady Gaga now, and... What else? Paparazzi. Obviously. It's been a long day. Put the kettle on. It's tea time with Matt. Okay, folks, it's nearly about time to wrap up the show. Um, but before we do, uh, there's uh, you know there's a couple of things I'd like to say before we get on to the bedtime story. Uh, and the first one is thank you for bearing with me uh, with tonight's show. I mean, technically speaking, um, 
the, the content's been good. I really put a lot of effort into this one, and I, I, I hope it shows. Uh, you know, I, I've really enjoyed actually getting everything together for this. Uh, and, um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed the show. I know we've had our technical problems, but, uh, you know, aside from that, I think it's gone quite well. So, you know. It really has, all good. things considered. Good. Uh, so thank you for joining me, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Um, and uh, secondly, I think I, I want to leave you, leave it before we do the story with, with a bit of advice for you. I, I think that we all agree that when you leave the house in the morning, it's important to look, feel, and smell great. Yes. Which is why I use Synergy by Matt. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Synergy by Matt is my all new range of cosmetic products. Developed by Honest Jeff's Very Safe Labs Incorporated. <laughs> These products are not tested on animals because we use orphans <laughs> instead. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Available now where all good body care products are sold. Synergy. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Synergy. The scent of winning, TM. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> that is good. That is very good. Writing credits for those go to, in part, to my co-writer, by the way, Angela. Thank you, Angela, for helping me with those. Oh, <laughs> we had great fun coming up with products for that. That was brilliant. Right. Okay, folks, it's time for the bedtime story. We're going to have to make this a quick one, I think, because uh, we're, we're way overrunning. That. Thank you, technical difficulties. Ugh. Right. Let's end this train wreck. Let's end this train wreck. Uh, right, our five words are fame, courgette, synergy, uh, infamy, and ocelot. That, that, which, which is a returning one for Tea Time with Matt, so let's uh, let's get that in there as well. Oh, and the bonus word today is blamange. <laughs> we can't try and get blamange in there. Purely because I think Billingsley suggested it, and you know what, it was too good to leave it out. Right. Let's do this train wreck. This, ladies and gentlemen, get snuggled up, get your tea down, yeah? This is Tea Time with Matt's Bedtime Story. Once upon a time, in the far-off land of BBC One, Sir Lord Alan Sugar had decided to retire. So the producers of the BBC show The Apprentice were looking for a new host. Luckily, they found one in the form of Honest Jeff from round the back of Tesco. This did mean relocating the boardroom to round the back of Tesco as well. And so for the filming of the new series, a whole host of new candidates gathered around the burning, uh, what do you call it, oil drum of fire, uh, which Honest Jeff was calling his boardroom. Honest Jeff sat them down. Hello everybody, welcome, he said. I am Honest Jeff and welcome to a brand new series of The Apprentice. I will not be working during this process, you will be working, and if you mess up, you will be fired. One of the candidates raised his hand. Um, uh, sorry, Sir Lord, um, Honest Jeff. N no, no, said Honest Jeff. I've not been knighted, I've not been made a lord, none of that. I'm just an honest, hard-working man who has never been proved to commit a crime, and that's the truth. And if you allegedly. Say al allegedly. And if you say otherwise, I will end you. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> S sorry about that, said the candidate. Uh, what's your name, young man? said Honest Jeff. Uh, m my name is Rick. I'm going to call you Wicked Rick, says Honest Jeff. So, Wicked Rick, uh, you are going to be the project manager for this first task, and you, he pointed at a random who's not the main focus of this story, you're going to be the project manager for your team. Now go away, and what I want you to do for this task is make me some products, and I will see you back in the boardroom in two hours' time. So the candidates all flitted away, and uh, very hurriedly decided to come up with team names. What about Courgette? said one of the candidates. Wicked Rick looked at him. What, what does that even mean? Well, courgettes are long and, and, you know, impressive, and they look like bombs, said the candidate. No, we're not going with that, said, said Wicked Rick. <laughs> uh, what about synergy, said another candidate. Wicked Rick punched him in the face. Rip. 
What about infamy? Said another one. We're getting better, said Wicked Rick, but I'm not entirely convinced. For several hours, the argument went on. And eventually, after several ridiculous suggestions, such as Ocelot and Blamange, the team came up with the perfect name. Team Fame, after two hours, started to work on their products. Unfortunately, they really had run out of time, so they had to just scribble a few ideas down on a notepad. And they reassembled back in the boardroom. Okay, says Honest Jeff, this task was all about creating products. Uh, I see we have both the teams here. What team names did you come up with? Wicked Rick stood up and said, Well, my, our, our team, Sir Lord uh, Honest Jeff. Dude, said Honest Jeff. Our team, Honest Jeff, uh, we, we've called ourselves Fame. What, after the musical? Said Honest Jeff. N no, no, it was it was just the only thing we could come up with. This, this whole thing's been a train wreck, to be honest. I know a guy who presents a radio show who frequently does shows that are train wrecks, said Honest Jeff. <laughs> And what about you? He said to the other project manager. Um, well, we've come up with a really good team name that we think is really strong and uh, accentuates the positive notes and the bonds between our team. Excellent, said Honest Jeff. What's it called? Synergy. Honest Jeff punched the project leader in the face. <laughs> what products have you come up with? Asked Honest Jeff. Well, we've come up with several, uh, said Wicked Rick. Uh, our first product, uh, we've come up with, uh, it's, it's a hand sanitizer called Germaway. I love it, said Honest Jeff. What does it do? Uh, well, it, it uses, uh, I mean, one of my team, says Wicked Rick, stumbling over his notes, uh, is, is, a, is a, um, a, one of those people that does, like, um, cleaning products, uh, and he's told me about these things called anti-endomantoids, uh, which kill 100% of germs. I love it, said Honest Jeff. What else have you come up with? Uh, said, uh... Wicked Rick going through his notes again. Um, we, we've got something else. Um, we, we've developed a brand of breakfast cereal. Uh, it's also ma it's made almost entirely of sugar and Welsh steam coal. Well, what's the point of that? Said Honest Jeff. Uh, because you can put a steam train with a face on the front of it and call them Steamios. Said Wicked Rick. I love it! Said Sir Lord Alan Sugar. Brilliant. Sir Lord Alan Sugar went over to the other team. What have you come up with? Okay, well, we've come up with several things, said the project manager. First of all, we've come up with a brand of breakfast tea. I hate it, said Honest Jeff. What else have you come up with? Okay, well, we've come up with a range of cosmetic products that could take on the name of an incredibly attractive and talented radio show host. I like where this is going, said Honest Jeff. What have you called it? We've called it Synergy, said the project manager. With regret, said Honest Jeff, you're all fired. And thus ended <coughs> the, lo the shortest series of The Apprentice in history, <laughs> and indeed this story. The end. Woohoo! Meeting asked, when did Sir Lord Alan Sugar come back? He walked back into the room because Honest Jeff got sick of them all. That's our show, That's folks. That's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. Okay, we're going to do the final sound bed and bring an end to this train wreck. Here we go. So, what did we learn from today's show? Well, we learned that fame doesn't make you immune from technical problems. That's the first big thing. Secondly, we learned that you know, if you let it, fame will change you. You start wearing sunglasses and advertising products that no one in their right mind would want to buy. And just generally changing the format of the things you actually love doing in order to hang on to that desperate feeling of fame. Incidentally, I am available for bar mitzvahs, children's parties, and other events. So, you know, email me, teatimewithmat at gmail.com if you have any work for me. Seriously. It's time for your nap. It is. I can already feel my career <laughs> slipping, so please help me out. I don't want to not be famous anymore. I need this. I need this. <sighs> Thank you, everybody. It's been a great show. I've really enjoyed it. Next week, we're talking all about movies. 
Uh, so, uh, if you have anything to contribute for the show next week, email me, teatimewithmatt at gmail.com. Uh, in the meantime, thank you all for coming. Take care, and I will see you next week. Bye! Bye! -bye.